What's going on? My name is Anthony Marcella. Um, three and zero, two knockouts um, for Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, next, next great Italian fighter. Um, I'm looking to make a name for myself. You're gonna see a lot of me very shortly. My main goal in life, um, I mean, it's just me and my father back home. I lost my mother when I was young. I was seven years old. I got, I got two brothers. You know, I got a family that that loves and supports me 150 percent. Um, you know, I'm just looking to take care of the family. My father, most important, you know, retire him, get him off his knees, and, uh, you know, and just take care of the family, take care of my people. Uh, when I was like 15 years old, um, my father wanted to learn self-defense. Uh, boxing wasn't something that ran in my family, nothing like that. You know, a lot of these guys, they started when, when they were eight years old, or even younger, but you can start in competition in the amateurs eight years old. Uh, so when I was about 15, you know, my father wanted me to learn self-defense. You know, I went to a couple local shows. I thought it was cool. I wanted to try it out. Um, and after a couple of weeks, they asked me if I wanted to fight. So we went to this local tournament. Uh, it was Silver Mittens, and uh, I ended up losing my first fight. It was like an all-out war. You know, I I knew nothing. You know, it was just pure balls. And uh, after that fight, I was I was mad as hell because I'm real competitive, and uh, you know, I took things real serious. You know, running every day, doing everything I had to do, and uh, we ended up entering the first uh, first major tournament. Um, at the time I was only 15, so it was the Silver Gloves. So I ended up winning the, the New England Silver Gloves, and we went to regionals. And uh, I had six fights going out to regionals, and uh, I went to the finals, and I fought uh, the previous year's national champion, who had like 80 fights at the time. You know, people basically people were telling me like, "Listen, man, like maybe you should come back next year, this and that." And I was like, "I didn't come here not to fight," you know. So uh, I ended up, you know, I, I beat this guy up from post to post. You know, he was a bloody mess. The doctor stopped the fight a couple times. Going to go see the doctor, make sure he was okay to continue. And they still gave that man the fight. Um, but the ref actually pulled me aside after the fight and said, "Listen, son," <clears throat> he said, uh, "He said I was in that ring with you." He said, "You know who won that fight?" He said, "You better be back here next year." So that's exactly what I did. I went back next year and I, I stopped both my opponents, so I didn't leave it to the judges. And I, you know, made my first, my first, uh, you know, my first national tournament that year. And honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I used to love that movie Bad Boys with uh, Will Smith. Yeah. I used to tell my dad I was gonna be a be a detective or whatever the hell he was in that movie, but I just thought it was cool that he was driving Ferrari, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so part I of... I, all I knew was I wanted Ferrari. <laughs> oh, man, you like the lifestyle. That's it, you know? <laughs> I feel it, I feel it. Shoot, um... So that's why I can't, obviously, naturally, you know, liking the lifestyle, uh, I didn't follow boxing. Floyd was the first fighter, you know, that I, that I watched when I, when I got involved with boxing. Um, Floyd Mayweather versus Ricky Hatton. That was the first boxing match that I've ever, like, sat down and watched. You know, my, my father, he was a big Mike Tyson fan, so I was around for those fights. You know, the family would get together, watch the, the Mike Tyson fights. But I was young, and I didn't, I didn't care about boxing. So, But the first fight I ever watched was a Floyd Mayweather fight. So naturally, I came into the sport, you know, a Floyd Mayweather fan, and just, you know, learning and, and pulling from his career. And, and I think that's why I struggled a little bit in the amateurs, because naturally, you know, Floyd's not a very aggressive fighter, at least not when I started following him. At the beginning of his pro career, he was knocking guys out left and right as he moved up in weight. He got a little smarter, you know, defensive head movement, you know, just a pop shot and being a counter puncher. So that's always been my style. So I didn't really have much of an amateur style. And I think that's why I struggled with those three round fights because in the amateurs they want they want you just throwing a million punches going forward, going forward, you know. And I think I, I lost a lot of fights because I wasn't aggressive enough. But uh, but that's why I was new, like you know, going into the pros that I that I I have something special going for me, especially. You know, being being a white Italian guy, I'm kind of a niche in the market. There's not a lot of white fighters in the game, other than you know my man Caleb Plant is doing his thing. In the end of the, in the, end, the end of the amateurs, I actually kind of you know trying to uh, try to make the Olympic team. You know, I was I, I really switched up my style a lot, trying to be more aggressive, and uh, it just it was it's not me. You know what I mean? It's not what I do. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a natural counter puncher. My reflexes are nice. My head movement's nice. Like I rarely ever get hit in a fight. Um, so towards the end of my amateur career, I actually I was kind of I was at a point where uh, a, a low point really, you know. And um, as as I started turning pro, we got back to you know doing back what I'm comfortable with, working on what I'm good at, you know what I mean, and, and making making improvements off of that, mm -hmm. working off of what I'm naturally good at, um, and you know we're working on turning the punches over naturally and, and more of that stuff to to really you want you want to you want to get knockouts, you know. I mean? People want to see knockouts at the end of the day. But, you know, it, a lot of people try to change my style and it didn't work for me. But the goal, the goal really before I was ever going to do anything or looking, looking to sign with anybody was, you know, at least get to 10 and 0, you know what I mean? Because I didn't have much of a, an amateur uh, resume, you know what I mean? Starting. 
uh, Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> uh, I came out here about two years ago um, when, when Floyd was training for the Pacquiao fight. Um, just curiosity and, and you know wanting wanting more. You know, uh, I'm from Rhode Island, like I said, and uh, and boxing isn't really isn't what it used to be out on uh, on the East Coast. And uh, as you see, all the big fights they're out here. Floyd's out here. And I was just looking for more work um, and looking to make a name. So I came out here two years ago, and uh, I didn't know anybody. I just walked in the gym and and started looking for work. And uh, little by little, you know, I started making a name for myself. Got to know everybody. Um, next thing I know, I was you know I was in the presence of Floyd Mayweather, and uh, I mean that's all she wrote, you know. And here we are. Yeah, she, she was a little, it was, she was a little bit extra with uh, with all that, you know, talking about she could beat Floyd and this and that. She was she took it a little overboard. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Floyd says it all the time, you know, any any true champion, Jamie can bounce back, you know. Uh, she definitely got to work on her hands, you know. She definitely, definitely got to work on her hands. You know, I think all her stoppages when she was stopping people, like the first round or whatever, that was all ground game stuff. She was she was tapping them out, you know, breaking their arms or whatever she was doing. I don't follow the sport that much, but, uh, you know, with, the, with all the Ronda Rousey stuff, you know, that's really started peaking everybody's attention. And, uh... I mean, my, my, my thoughts on her, you know, I mean, I wish her the best. Uh, like, we, we talk about this Floyd Mayweather with Conor McGregor uh, controversy. And Conor don't stand a shot in a boxing ring with, with Floyd Mayweather. You know, he, look, he looks good. His stand-up looks good against MMA fighters who have garbage boxing ability. But you're talking about two different things, and everybody thinks he's so sharp and so strong. You got to realize one thing, too. Like, if he gets in a boxing match, he's going to have some bigger 8-ounce gloves on. He ain't going to be as fast as he looks. He's not going to be as strong as he looks in that MMA ring or a cage or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> you know, it, I just don't. I think that if anything is bad for boxing, um, this Mayweather McGregor thing, it's going to be a little bit bad for boxing because at the end of the day, it's it's a joke, you know. So you're saying that uh, it's a big joke, right? So what about this Chris Brown and Soldier Boy? <laughs> like, this is that's <laughs> what's bigger a joke? Yeah, no, no, no. That's that's you know, that's probably an even bigger joke for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably an even bigger joke. Uh, Come on, man. No, nah, I gotta go. I gotta go, with Chris. I just think Soldier Boy is a joke. <laughs> he is a joke, man. And Chris got rhythm. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta have rhythm in this sport. So, I just think it's gonna be it's gonna be ugly. You know, I think it's gonna be real, real ugly. It's it's two green. If it's like you ever seen two two green fighters in the gym who just started out, they're selling out. You know, you talk about fighters who obviously can fight ten times better than these two guys. At the end of the day, they haven't made a name. You know what I mean? Those guys have made names in the music industry. That's why it's gonna sell a little bit because people know them. It's mm -hmm. all about. That's all. That's what boxing is. At the end of the day, people don't understand that boxing the business. You know, yeah. um, I don't care if you're better than Floyd Mayweather. If if you're not putting asses in the seats, then there's no money on the table for you to get paid. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of these fighters don't understand. Is you know they wanna, they believe you know, and maybe they are as good as they say they are, but they don't understand that that if if people aren't coming to see you fight. You know, like uh, you can't demand a number. Uh, you can't put a price on your head and say, oh, "This is how much money I want." If you're not bringing, the, you know, that mu that much money in ticket sales or pay-per-view buys or, or whatever, you know, what I'm saying, if there's no money on the table to pay you, how are you going to demand that number? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm partnering in, in, a, in a, a restaurant that we just opened up about you know, six, seven months ago. It's called Fit Fan. Um, my guy Pat, yeah, a couple of years ago, because um, I'm always sleeping in late, he said, uh, "You know, everything you're working for." It's only a dream unless you wake up and go and go get it. So um, and that really stuck with me, you know what I mean? Because like, obviously I have so many different dreams, so many things I want to do. But you know, if I'm sleeping, I'm just wasting time, you know. And it's just a dream. It's like what they say, you know, uh, a dream with a deadline is a goal, you know. So that really stuck with me. You know, whatever whatever your dream is, just work for it. Go out and get it. You know, you you can't you can't let all these all these naysayers and people nitpick at your dream. You know what I mean? That's just, you gotta block that stuff out, you know? You gotta block that stuff out, and you gotta just keep the end goal on your mind. Just think about the end goal. The rest the rest will figure itself out as long as you're working. Like I said, you know, as long as you're not sleeping the day away, you know what I mean? As long as you're waking up, you know, keep that end goal, that end vision on your mind, and the rest will work itself out as long as you're working for it. What people can expect to see is, you know, you know a flashy, you know, uh, Boxer, you know what I'm saying, but but I'm looking to close the show. I'm gonna pick you apart, you know. I'm 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 gonna frustrate you, and then you know once I wear you down, I'm gonna go for the kill. Make sure you follow me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Anthony Marcella. And that's M A R S E L L A. Uh, my website, teammarcella.com. You can get some of my merchandise there as well. And don't forget, 
Clock in, not out. Shout out to my guy for the exclusive interview.